Now we can start building up the hero component and that is the gray box with the image on the left and text on the right and we'll split it up or we'll include the subscribe form as another component. So in this video we'll focus on the image and layout on the left, the right, styling of the text and the badge and the next one will be the form itself. So ignore the top header, ignore the footer, we're not focusing on it, we only want to have the form layout looking something like this and that's exactly what we'll do now. Firstly we'll create the, the layout component so instead of having the classes inside of the page itself we will extract it to layout component so create a new file layout.js inside of the components folder this will be a simple function or arrow function for us which will receive children as one of the props and then it will render the children inside of it okay so simple far arrow function <laughs> far arrow function <laughs> simple arrow function returning a simple div and the div is exactly the same one as we've created inside of the page component so let's go back to it firstly render the children and the classes will grab from the home component and render it like this okay then we of course need to export it so export default layout and then we'll use it and import it inside of the page component instead of the div we are now rendering the layout component and all its children will be rendered inside of it import layout from components layout okay so we've extracted that classes into its own component and now we can do exactly the same thing for the hero component okay so we'll grab the paragraph from here create a new component hero change the name and paste the paragraph inside of it of course we don't need the children in this case and this will be the paragraph from the home component pasting inside and now we have a hero we can import it or use it inside of the page import it just change the name to hero and just to make sure that this is working let's change the copy of the text to a hero component from components and we should see that rendered on the page instead of the paragraph inside of it we want to have a div container and inside of it we want to have two parts one is the image on the left and one is the text on the right okay so that's the structure of the html we have a container that will give it some border and to specify border with Telvin CSS we'll just enter border that will give it border from all sides and then we need to specify the border color which will be border gray 200 and that will make a nice border around the whole thing now we have image and text containers and we want on the larger breakpoint these two containers to sit next to each other we'll make it flex just on the medium breakpoint so now we have them next to each other and on the small breakpoint they wrapping in the normal flow okay so similar to the form example image is on top and on the side when we are increasing the browser window okay so that's the top level container the image container will include image that I've already included in the starting files and it's inside of the assets and here is the file name image underscore next.js 101 cover dot png and if we save it we should see it in the browser let's go through it in the public folder any asset you want to link in from the front end you put it inside of public and then you refer to it using the slash assets and the file name okay so that's how we including the image we'll give it some alt tag just so we don't lose any SEO juice and on the container itself we will give it some background color first we'll try to match the background color of the image and for now that's not gonna work but we'll fix it later the text center just to make the image in the middle and in the larger breakpoint we want the image to take one third of the size okay so the W hyphen one third will make it one third of the container size 
in the image itself we will center it using the mx auto okay so now we've got now we've got the image centered as i said the background color doesn't match the background color of the image we'll fix it but we've got it responsive image is loading and and it's a good next step now we'll style the text inside of the other container instead of the text we'll include simple heading 2 and similar with styling divs we can just include class name on this html element to style it tailwind has some uh, utility classes for styling text one of them is font bold to make it bold and then the text size as well we'll make it 2xl to make it a little bit larger than the rest of the body and we'll give it some margin bottom three okay so that will space out the elements underneath so let's put a dummy list item here that's the text itself and on the container we give it some horizontal padding and a little bit bigger padding on the larger breakpoint we'll center the text in the middle and inside of the bigger breakpoint we will also make sure that the text is two-thirds of the size okay so now we have the container styled the text is centered and one thing that is not working on the mobile there's no spacing top and bottom okay so make sure we specify some py for the vertical spacing and this is better on mobile and it's fine on desktop too okay so this is the text uh, rough style for now now it's your turn to style the list items and for that under the video you can just copy and paste the outcomes the three the array of three strings that we want to loop over and render it as a list with the tick icon okay so you can ignore the icon for now but i want you to create a loop over the three items and render it as a list style it however you like and use what you've learned so far hopefully it all makes sense and refer to the tailwind if you need some classes for the text if you want to make it a little bit different color than the rest of it feel free to play with it and we'll do it together shortly we can remove the paragraph and instead of that we'll want to render a list item for each of the outcomes so let's first check whether the outcomes exists and if it does we render unordered list and inside of it we can use the map to map over each of the items okay so outcome.map and inside of it we will we'll just get the item i call it i and you can see that i actually made a typo luckily i've got prettier in action so when i save it it will all fix it okay so i'm looping over these items returning one list item and we'll give it a key of the text itself and then we'll render the text inside of the list item so this is the markup now i saved it as you can see the formatting is correct and we've got the text showing up in the browser that's perfect on the unordered list on the container we will give it margin bottom just to space out the elements underneath it margin bottom six and then we'll add some classes to the list item itself okay we want to make the text a little bit lighter so we'll give it text gray 700 and that will make it a little bit lighter than the rest of the body text and then we also want to give it some margin bottom too so it space out all these items and now you're wondering where are the dots where where are the list bullet bullet lists the default bullet lists and uh, we can put them back in because by default list items are unstyled in tailwind css but if we use the list disk you would see them coming up and list disk inside would just move them in okay so that's the default behavior of tailwind there is no list items or no disk by default and if we go to the docs search for list style position you'll see that by default it's not included none of the styles so if we again search for list and go to the list style type where is it base style lists are unstyled okay so if you're wondering where they are where, where it is coming from 
by default lists are unstyled in Tailwind. Okay, so that's our styling. We can remove the disk. We don't need it. We will include nice icons. I've already included the thick icon inside of the icons folder. So if we go here, the index exports a couple icons. One of them is thick. And that's the one we want to import inside of this component. Now we can reuse this as a component itself and paste it and use it as a React component. So this is not SVG directly. This is the React component made out of SVG. So originally I had only SVGs in this folder. Then I use the SVG R plugin, the CLI, to take all SVGs in this folder and convert them into React components. Okay, so I'm not gonna go into the SVG R in this tutorial, but that's how it was created. I'm including the link to it under the video. So feel free to explore it a little bit more. As I said, you can use the CLI to point to a folder with SVG icons and it will automatically create all the React components from it and then you can just import it in your other components. Okay, so that's where the tick comes from and if we save it, we should see it showing up. Of course, the sizing is not ideal. We need to tweak the size of it. We can flex the whole list item to make sure that the tick is next to the text and then wrap the icon and the text in its own span. So let's do that, move the icon inside of it, wrap the text inside of span as well. This will show them side by side. And we need to firstly specify the, the width or the height to the icon itself. Okay, so let's apply height four, which will which should make it visible. And as you can see, there's no space in between them. So let's make sure that there is a space on the right and also the icon should be centered if the text wraps on multiple lines. This should do it self-center and margin right too. So let's expand it. That looks pretty good. Nice responsive. And the last, the remaining bit is to make the text a little bit lighter and we can use opacity to do that. Okay, opacity 75 or we could specify different background color or different color. Um, choosing the opacity just to show you that that's another option in Tailwind CSS. That looks pretty close. Now we have the text wrapping and to complete the component and get ready for the form itself, we will also include the simple badge under the list. I'm copy pasting. It is quite similar to what we've done in the whole of this video. So we including another component called coming soon badge and it will look like this simple span with a blue background and white text. The only new thing inside of this component might be the rounded MD, which just gives it rounded corners, okay, on a scale of small, medium as well. So you can look into the rounded corners of Tailwind in the docs and that's pretty much completes this. Now we are ready to create the form itself. Now let's sum up what we've done in this video. We've created a responsive layout for our hero component. We've created two components. One is the layout that fixes everything in the middle of the viewport and gives it some max width. The one thing we actually need to fix is the alignment of the image. We want it to be always centered. Okay, for that we will need to give it, give the container of the image the flex attribute and flex class that way it should be nicely centered that's better and then we've created the hero component that has one third of the image with a gray background and text on the right side which is two thirds of the container then we've styled some of the text brought in icon and the coming soon badge and that's nicely responsive in the next video we will use the tailwind config to fix the gray background to match the image and we'll start doing the form itself. So hopefully this gave you some insights of how to work with Stelwin in more detail, how to style all your components and use some of the responsive queries to quickly create layouts like this.